Welcome to Art Talk with April. I'm April Harris of Inked April and the host of this podcast. This is season four. We have some amazing artists on. I can't wait to share them with you. So let's get started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art Talk with April. Today, we have Lynette Melnick, who is a multi-passionate artist and a creativity and entrepreneur coach. So thank you, Lynette, for coming on today and talking to me. I'm so excited. So on these um, interviews, I kind of start from the beginning. Like, how did you get started in art? Where where did your creativity come from? It's a big question. (laughs) It is a big question. And thank you so much for having me on here. I'm excited to chat with you today. Yeah. Uh, I, I think as most creatives, we... We have this passion inside of us when we're young. And I don't know if the child part of us ever leaves because we want to keep creating. And so I was one of those people. I was, as I was a a youngster, oh my gosh, I would just do all the kind of creative things. And I would, as I was uh, in grade school, I would take extra courses on, oh, I want to learn this thing, or I would do extra crafts or, or find out this. I was always exploring and trying to find out how to do things. And so that's always stuck with me and stuck with me so much that all the careers that I chose were very creative and artistic. And then uh, almost came full circle, well, I guess came full circle into now being an artist full time, as well as a creativity and and entrepreneur coach for other artists and creatives to help them along their journey. So it's, it's been a a wonderful ride and a creative one. Yeah, I can, I, I, I feel your story so much because you're, you worked or had a marketing business, right? I did. Um, My first, I had so many careers, like it's 1.0, 2.0, 2.0. Yeah, (laughs) me too. (laughs) (laughs) We'll need to discuss more about that. Um, I was first an interior designer and then worked in the field a lot, went back to university and with visual communication design. So I cut to the chase. Uh, I started my own design and marketing and corporate communication business and did that for about 20 years, over 20 years. And throughout that, there was the artist in me doing some painting, doing some courses when I could. Life starts to happen and then art goes by the wayside and then it comes back again. And so then uh, became an artist. And I think the multi-passionate part of it comes from when you're a designer and you have all these clients and you might be creating identities for them and different brands for them and and marketing, but they're all individuals. So I have to find out what in them to promote. And so then when it comes to my art, because I'm so used to coming up with different ideas for clients for over 20 years, then it's, oh, well, I can try this next or, oh, I love doing this part of things, or I love photography. So how can we add that in? Or how can we do this? So it's, it's, there's so many things out there to enjoy. And uh, so now I, I, I'm an artist, and then I, I help people go through that with being a coach. So it's, it's yeah. a lot of fun. Ah, gosh, I, I just, I just resonate with that so much, because I think the same way I get a little overwhelmed with all the all the things I want to learn or try or, you know, and I get curious. And so I go down these rabbit holes of trying to experiment with things. I'm one minute I might be doing design. I might be doing video or I might be doing, you know, painting or something like that. (laughs) And so it's one of those things that it kind of carries across a lot of different areas. And that's really fun. And how do you decide how to, which ones to do? Oh, now here comes the questions. <laughs> the coaching part of me comes out. <laughs> but more oh, just interest. In I have no idea. I think it's, you know, maybe just what I feel like doing in the moment. Like it's the, maybe it's the way the idea comes to me that I think, okay, this would be a really good you know, design or a really good illustration or, you know, and it just sort of, 
whatever the idea is kind of lines up better with this medium or this way of doing it, I guess. <laughs> it sounds like you haven't figured out though that it works for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I sometimes say to people that when they say, why don't you do the same type of art all the time? Yeah. And and then my background may come into it. But also it's the fact that when I wake up in the morning or throughout the day, we don't wear the same things every day. I don't eat the same foods every day. I'm not in the mood for that that kind of thing. And so I think, how can I create the same thing every day? For me, it doesn't work. But for other people, I just admire how they can uh, dive deep and deep divers yeah. that they can concentrate on that and really excel in what they're doing when they concentrate and focus. And I think, oh, there's so much uh, variety in people that yeah. it's so wonderful to embrace all that, the people that can concentrate on things and the others that are, are doing little curiosity. Like you said, you have curiosity in so many things. And then try other things so it's it's all good yeah I know I haven't really thought about it that way and I am like that like when it comes to food like I don't like to eat the same things back to back to back I'm like okay I need to mix it up we got we got to try something different or something and it's funny that you associate that with or made that connection you know with like wearing different clothes and eating different things so <laughs> That's like the first time I've ever heard anything like that before. So that's really cool. Um, with your art, what do you primarily make? Or are you, it sounds like you're doing different kinds of things. Like how do you create things? I am mostly, I think it comes from movement. Mm -hmm. uh, because Maybe I wanted to be, well, I know I wanted to be a dancer and that didn't happen, but uh, it's just whether it's music and listening to the music and trying to put that expression on the canvas or the dance and flowing, it's a lot of times it all comes back to that aspect of things, whether I'm doing more abstract, uh, sometimes I do more nature and even though it may not look as flowing when I'm putting those brush strokes on, it just feels like it. And you just get into, well, I guess get into that flow that we as yeah. creatives are supposed to get into. Yeah. <laughs> I love it when we get into that zone of, of that flow of just forgetting what the world does. Yeah, out yeah. And, and we're just concentrating on what we do. So I think it's mostly um, movement. Yeah. And vertical movement, music, dance. Yeah. I absolutely love your abstract paintings. They are just so amazing. And you're right. I mean, like you really show movement in those paintings. Oh, it's it's just you. it's just absolutely beautiful. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Um, just the way that you like, and I'm do you typically work in larger sizes? I love to work in larger sizes I don't typically though because it, it I seem to go in phases and it depends if I do commissions as well and most of the commissions are larger ones um, but it almost takes a little bit more practice after doing larger ones and then if I go to doing smaller ones I almost have to relearn it and and practice again and go all oh, right okay I have to use a little bit smaller strokes because a lot of times I'll with the larger canvases I'll it's movements with my shoulder instead of movements with my wrist on a canvas. And so it's, it's big movements and I have a really big brush. I love. And then there was one I had, uh, I had to create a, a client wanted a, I can't remember the size of it, six by nine feet, maybe. And she wanted a smaller one, but enlarged. So I had to come up with uh, putting together a number of, brushes together and I've seen it online of people doing it and I thought okay well how can I do this and make it flexible for me so I I went to the hardware store I could I love hardware stores there's so many great things in a hardware store yeah. <laughs> and came up with this contraption that I put together where I can slide brushes onto this back panel and screw them in because I didn't want them drilled in I wanted the flexibility to put different 
different brushes on so I wouldn't ruin the brushes because I wanted to use the brushes again. Yeah. So I slid on four brushes and I made this 16 foot or 16 foot. Oh my gosh, wouldn't that be big? 16 inch wide brush and used it on a canvas. Uh, boy, was that was interesting trying to get that flow of that wide brush. Oh, so wow. it took a lot of practice before I even started doing the commission. But uh, uh, so I love doing large, but then it's such a challenge. Uh, uh, a few years back, I had done little three inch ornaments. And so all of a sudden that little brush stroke, sweeping brush stroke movement was so tiny. <laughs> But so it was, it's just the juxtaposition of both of them are, are so amazing. Yeah, I hadn't even thought about it that way, but you're right. Like, and that's kind of like, I was speaking to another artist about um, like trying to work more loose versus more detailed. And that he was saying, step back from your painting, you know, and kind of, you know, just be more loose you know and not and not like up close to your painting which is kind of the same thing when you're saying your big sweeping brush strokes where you're using your shoulder versus your wrist is going to be so different it's almost like a completely different style of painting really it's like you're changing your whole you know way of working it, it would be like um basically two different ways yeah yeah you're right I hadn't thought of it like that that's cool and I like that aspect of the that uh, fellow who had talked about stepping away usually when I tell people to if they ask me about how to paint looser I just say get a bigger brush <laughs> you can do details when you have a four inch or six inch or eight inch brush isn't that the truth that <laughs> that's a good yeah okay pair those two bits of advice exactly. together <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe put it on a long, put the brush on a long pole and stand a long ways away. And then you really, yeah. you're reaching out about, you really can't get detailed if you're, if you're trying to coordinate that. Oh, that's so fun. I just imagine like trying to do that. That would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> some, of my, some of the, the artists, and I can't remember who it was. It might've been a, uh, I don't know if it was Jackson Pollock or somebody who, or maybe it was Picasso, where you see images of them and forgive me people, you'll have people saying, no, it was this artist. <laughs> um, I can't think at the moment, but, and they put their brush on a long stick and they would draw lines with it. And the lines would be so beautiful because they weren't structured lines wow. uh, and very organic. And that was really interesting to watch that. Yeah, and that's one of the things I really love about um, abstract painting is kind of, you know, like working in texture and different types of line and, you know, um, painting and layers and that kind of thing and how that can all come together to make these really beautiful, interesting paintings or, or drawings or whatever it is. And um I just I just find that fascinating because I'm I don't work that way like I'm more detailed and mm -hmm. I was saying maybe I shouldn't be so detailed maybe I should loosen up after talking to different artists I'm like okay maybe I should try that and do right. something different <laughs> or you could do it at the same time if you have you probably have a leftover canvas or something that oh, you yeah, yeah. Um, that you use to get your paint off yeah. Well, in a sense, you're already doing it if you have a detailed section and then maybe maybe you have another painting you've already done and you take up an extreme close up of some of your brush strokes, which really are little mini abstract paintings in themselves. If you were to cut down your whole painting, not literally, but <laughs> just <laughs> just taking that. And so then when you're doing your detailed painting, you're on your leftover painting and you're just swiping away and doing strokes and doing that and you're just building up the beautiful richness of layers in that yeah. painting or abstract painting oh that's interesting I like the idea of doing that <laughs> the beauty of abstract painting at least for me is that uh, I think most of us go through that ugly stage of oh my gosh like 
this painting is not working out. Why is it even happening? Why am I even doing this? And that even though I may have a lot of ugly layers in there and I keep plugging away at it, all those layers add to the richness of the final piece because sometimes little bits still show through or the translucent layer will happen or a little piece that you just haven't painted. And so that's just telling the whole story of that painting even more so. And sometimes when I look back on, on some of the abstracts and I see little bits that I, I didn't cover completely over and I go, oh, right, that's when that didn't work out. But oh, it looks pretty good with that now. But <laughs> just that little part is painting. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, it, when you were talking about that, I'm, of course, I'm always like, I think, trying to find meaning in things. But, you know, it's kind of like life, you know, like we start out and we're kind of like not very good at things and we make a lot of mistakes and we fail and we have to start over or we change direction completely. And then over time, you know, as we get older, hopefully we're you know, really, I guess, developing into this sort of well-rounded, amazing person. <laughs> exactly. you know, that happens that way, but I think about it that way, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I think part of that, it's, it's uh, great that you bring that up, actually, because one of the things that I find hard when I'm um, helping artists is that whole mindset that we get into when you're saying about um, we're learning and all that and have things when we're younger. And then when we, it's getting into that artist mindset from every day we're doing the logical, rational mindset of the adults and grownups with, that we've become. And we're doing the right things, we're raising kids, we're going to work, or we're doing this, we're making a meal, or we're deciding on different things. And so we always have that mindset of logical and being right. And then all of a sudden, the creativity aspect of being an artist flips in, and we in our brain are supposed to all of a sudden flip to being logical, to all of a sudden thinking, okay, yes, we can make mistakes and we can be messy and we can have fun and we can learn and experiment. And a lot of times that's really difficult for people to switch and where they can get stuck. And so I think keeping some of that little, that part of learning when you're, when you're a kid and, and doing things and somehow remembering that and bringing it into how can I flip in being an artist again and know that I can make mistakes and I can experiment and make that shift. And then you have to shift back and go, okay, I have to go make dinner now. And how is it going to do that? So I don't burn it. And, and so I have to do the right things there. I can't really make mistakes. Otherwise it'll flow all over the stove or something yeah. like that. <laughs> so it's a, it's that part of you, you want to graduate from and know things, but yet as artists, we also want to still embrace that part of us yeah. for being a child and having fun and learning and allowing ourselves to be creative. And it's tough, especially when, for myself, perfectionist, and now I'm not so much. Yeah. I don't know if people say recovering perfectionist, but uh, with my work before things in design, they had to be exact and everything. And all of a sudden now with especially abstract art, I can be a little bit more free, but gosh, it took a while to <laughs> give myself permission to go, okay, I can do that. Yes, I can. I don't have to be exact. I don't have to be precise. So yeah. it's, it's, our minds are always part of the factor when we're, when we're creating things. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think that's why a lot of my interviews come back to that kind of stuff is because I mean, that's such a huge part of being an artist or being in art or being creative in any kind of way is you're trying to express yourself, you know, and then you've got your your child kind of self that's more playful and reckless and, and does all the things, you know, which, you know, I have two small children. So when I talk to them about art, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm an artist. I can do that. And, and they just go for it. And then you, and then I'm talking to these adults and they're like, I just, 
I don't know if I'm doing the right thing or what I'm supposed to be, you know, like, is this the right path? Or sometimes I'm unsure, you know, about like. <laughs> Such a great example, April. Oh my gosh. <laughs> your, you just want to bottle what your kids are saying to you and that freedom. And just think if we could somehow bottle that. I know, <laughs> really. Be like, here, take this pill. It makes <laughs> you feel better. <laughs> This will give you some childlike feelings, you know, and really help you mix it up. <laughs> but even the confidence that your kids have, oh, I can do that. I can be an artist. I can be anything. I can do this. And yeah. then what happens to us, we kind of go, oh, we grow up and go, no, maybe we can't. So somehow you just need to um, capture what they're saying. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I like to ask people is, you know, what are some of the challenges that you've had as an artist? What are some of the things that you felt like, you know, I wish someone had told me about this earlier, or I wish someone had taught me this in school. (laughs) What do you think? (laughs) Oh, I think, gosh, there's just challenges along the way, right? Right. Um, And things are happening. Society's changing. Access to art is changing. I remember back in, in in school, I would say, because I always knew I was going to be a business owner. And I would say, but how can I sell that? And how do I do that? And they'd always say, oh, you'll find out when you're out in the working world. Oh, you'll find out. And I'd be going, no, but I, you, I need to know now. I want to learn that as well. Let's learn how to do art and, and learn how to do this. So I think some of the challenges um, really are... Well, when I first started out as an artist, it was getting known and seen and how to get my art out there. And by the time I started doing it, um, social media was there. And so uh, Instagram and and those were quite good for me for getting my art out there and being seen and not relying on the bricks and mortar art galleries, which are very good, but also limiting And they also uh, have the restrictions. Can you get into them? You need to have maybe more experience, whereas social media was, you don't need, you just need an account and here we go. (laughs) So I think it was um, dealing with being found, uh, people seeing my work, and also part of the business aspect of being an artist is that clients that know like and trust factor of they may like your art but they also need to know a little bit about you and trust that maybe you're not a fly-by-night operation and be gone especially if you are doing commissions and you disappear when they give their money to you oh no (laughs) so building up that and, and letting people see who you are um That's always a challenge. And I think even nowadays with things changing, Instagram isn't so friendly to me anymore with, uh, and maybe I just have been a bit tired of it. So then I rely on uh, looking at other things. Pinterest is a wonderful avenue, but also uh, seeing people in person, going to art shows and meeting people, which is so much fun, chatting with people about art and finding out about them. uh, And also, email list challenge to get more people on the email list and how to do that. Uh, But it's a great sales tool. So it's, and also challenges just in your thoughts too. I was going up and down on, can I do this? Do I want to do this? Should I do this? Do I want to go through this again? Okay. And then going through all that and, and realizing, yes, I can. And, and okay, I can do this. And, no, don't judge myself as much as what I think. I'm judging myself more. Let's see, how can I say this? I was judging myself more than what I thought other people were judging me, mm. which was holding me back. So that was another one of my challenges. But you just keep going, putting one step ahead of one another and trying new things and breaking it down into little baby steps. And so it doesn't seem oh so overwhelming. If you look at the big picture and going, how can I be from here to here? If you look at another artist and 
they've been five years in the business or 10 years or 20 years, and you're just starting out, you can't compare your journey to their journey yeah. where they are. And also your journey is individual anyways. And you need to look inside and trust your journey. And I think for me, it was learning how to do that and realizing that I'm not somebody else. I may want to be like somebody else, like, oh, look what they're doing. Oh, they're selling this and they're selling this, but yeah. <laughs> that may not be my journey. I might might not need want to do uh, supplying for galleries maybe and having to do 20 paintings every time the gallery wants something, or I may want to do it a different way or may have different topics. And, and so I think it's also looking inside and seeing what I really want to do and what my intentions are. Yeah. Oh, wow. You, you, you get me a lot I started, there. <laughs> I started to really babble, didn't I? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I love it. I agree with everything that you said. Um, I think that, you know, all of those things are, are things that we all kind of struggle with along the way. And I've always wondered, you know, like even like, so I'm a graphic designer, like I'm a, that's what I do uh, right. for my job. And so um, I always wondered, okay, why didn't they teach us how to talk with clients and kind of help them make better decisions and lead the how to lead someone in the right direction and how to present or kind of sell and you know talk about your work and things like that more like they did a little bit of that like you would you know make something and be like okay the reason I did this you know but that was pretty much it there wasn't a whole lot of like building relationships and you know speaking with clients and you have to do that just just the same as an artist like talking about commissions and working with people and um you know I think one of the common issues that I've seen is artists getting approached for commissions that don't have that are not anything like what they actually do so you know, requests for things that aren't kind of their wheelhouse, you know, it's not the thing that they paint. It's like, you know, coming to someone for a portrait and they're really an abstract painter and you're like, how do That's I explain hard. this, you know, and you're trying to like, and maybe it's someone, you know, that you're already connected with and you're like, I don't want to hurt their feelings or or make them feel like I don't care, but this isn't my, this isn't what I'm good at, you know, like you're, if you get a portrait painting from me, it's going to be terrible, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm just making, making it up, you know, but um, things it's like that, important. you know, just knowing how to kind of navigate those discussions and um, kind of help yourself grow and, and succeed through, through doing those sorts of things like do you have is any have you um had any issue with commissions or learning how to deal with you know strange requests or anything like that uh I can't think of anything off hand one thing I had a benefit was like you uh, with working in the design field was I was already used to doing projects um, and having doing contracts and, and working with clients. And so, but that can relate actually to even an, an artist who has a uh, contract for a commission. Yeah, yeah. Back in the design days, when I had a contract and some things happened and it wasn't in my contract and something went a little array of, oh, I didn't say that I would, they had to make decisions on time schedules or it was going to be done this and they're dragging it out for six months. Okay, that has to be added to my contract. So my contract would be tweaked with every, not every client, but a lot of clients or a lot of clients that would be maybe frustrating clients. Uh, so when commissions came along, it wasn't as bad. One of the main things I think, there was one client and I still remember it because it was a huge learning experience. And usually I would be on that same wavelength and they had had shown me a, a painting and they really liked one I had done before. And they said, 
this is what we we want you to do these colors this and so I said okay I did not ask them any more questions big mistake because what I should have asked them and this has changed ever since then is I asked them what did they see in that painting because I saw it a little bit differently because that was how I painted it so I saw it differently and they saw it as becoming something else and so we didn't meet in the middle uh, when I showed them the first um, I, I go through to about three quarters of the way through and then I, I show them it because if I show them that in the beginning they see chances are the the layers underneath which will be nothing like the finished piece and uh, so I show them it closer to the end and they looked at it and they hummed and hawed about it I went oh did I miss something on this? And I, I did. So it was, it was now I really ask, what do you see from this artwork? And what, um, what do you want to experience? What do you see in it? How do you feel in it? And then it's, oh, okay, that's different than what I feel, but I can understand what you mean now. Got it. Okay, I'll go and make this. Or if it's, I see this, and I can go, no, I can't do that for you. And with more the more commissions you do and the more uh, work you do with clients you'll realize what your boundaries are and exactly like you said it might not be as crystal clear as I don't do portraits but it can be okay you want something that I can't do and you're picking for me because I do a few different styles you're picking from one style and another style and another style well that's not going to work I'm not yeah. going to in all of them uh <laughs> So let's pick a style and see if you'd like it. And if they truly want something that I can't give them, then I have to know it's okay for me to walk away. And that's sometimes one of the hardest things for people to do because it could be money going out the door that they really want. But then they have to think, am I going to be frustrated doing it? Can I do it? Um, Will it be something that the client will be happy with? Because if the client isn't happy with it, it could be negative feedback out there that they could be telling something else. Whereas opposed to, even if I would say to them, I love your ideas. I love that you want to combine my three pieces. I, what you're asking, I just don't feel I could do right for you and justify because I want to create the best work possible for you. And But I know somebody else who could help you. So mm -hmm. then at least they go, wow, she understood what she can and can't do, but has also given us a solution of somebody else. If that doesn't work, that's only happened um, one time that I can think of that I should have done it. But um, yeah, it's just, and, and you get used to this as you're doing it more so. Oh, well, thank you so much, Lynette, for talking to me today. It has been such a wonderful conversation and you have so much insight, you know, having your experience with all these different, you know, career paths and with coaching people and how can people get in touch with you? Let's say they want a commission or want to look at your art or also if they want to get coaching. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You are just a joy to chat with and you've made me feel so comfortable like, and you've been just delightful. So oh, I thank you for that and giving me the opportunity to talk to other artists. Um, for myself to contact me, it's at uh, my website is lynettemelnick.com. And I have both the coaching and the art on that website. And Instagram is Lynette Melnick Art. And then I can be found on Pinterest and LinkedIn at Lynette Melnick. Oh, Basically, awesome. search my name. Yeah, yeah really. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Lynette. It has been Thank awesome. You. The conversation with Lynette continues next week in part two. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Art Talk with April. Please subscribe and share. See you next Tuesday. Hope you have a great week.